Good evening, dear audience. I hope you all enjoyed a glass of champagne or maybe beer. <laughs> Last but not least, we're coming to our final speaker for today, Mr. Graham Penman, who also came from abroad to be part of the Legal Revolution 2017. We are really thank you to have you here. Mr. Pen Penman is Senior Vice President at Hot Dogs Limited. He will treat the topic, engage, consolidate, and connect. In particular, he will explain the document automation as a tool for customer engagement, system consolidation, and connected efficiency. Please welcome Mr. Graham. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, for those of you who do not know me at all, which is probably most of you in the room, uh, let me explain a couple of things about me. So my name is Graham. In the SVP at Hot Docs for our services division. And you'll probably notice from the accent, and as has been said before, I'm not actually from this part of the world. I've traveled not that far to be here, uh, but I've come from a place called Scotland, which is renowned for its castles, it's renowned for its uh, kilts, it's renowned uh, for its haggis, and also, most importantly, it's renowned for its whiskey. And because of that, and as a true Scot, I'm very pained to be keeping you from the bar. So as a result, I'm not going to talk for that long tonight and allow you to get back to the bar and evening entertainment. So a little bit about what we do. And I thought, oh, he hasn't brought me a drink, unfortunately. It was only alcohol-free, oh, alcohol -free, so we're not going to have that tonight then. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about engaging, about consolidating, about connecting systems. And you're probably going to notice I'm not really going to talk about hot dogs that much or for a little while, which will pain our marketing team. But hey, that's life. So what are we going to talk about tonight? Uh, I was in a really interesting session last week, in fact, Friday before I came here, and I totally rewrote this talk because of it. I was in a design agency in Edinburgh, a PR agency, a brand agency, and it was fantastic. It was like therapy sessions for us. We sat down and they were taking us through mood boards and different ideas about what we were going to do and things like that. And it was an absolutely fantastic experience. I hate these kind of things, but they got us involved in thinking about how we evolve our product, what branding it is, what it looks like. It's a very interesting process uh, to go through, unpacking who your company is, who your brand is, who you were trying to serve. And what came out of that session was an incredibly important thing as you think about your company and, and how you service your users. And it always comes back to that question of why. So in the room, have you ever, have you ever seen kind of talks on Simon Simonek's why, what, and how, the big kind of circular as we move out? It all comes back to that question why. Why you do what you do? Why does your company, why does your firm exist? What is the point of that company? Why do you do what you do? And it's quite a telling question. When you sit back and you think about why you do what you do, you usually unearth some things that aren't quite right about the way you either do business or the things that you implement as a business. Are you meeting your customers' needs? Second of all, do you know who your customers actually are? And if you don't, how can you service those customers' needs without actually understanding uh, your customer? And we were sitting down and we were going through all these different processes and we we're asking these questions. And the reason I bring this up is that I see an alarming trend in many different companies that they don't particularly understand what the underlying requirement for their technology solution is. So this has been a fantastic event. We've seen some different presentations next door and in the other rooms, seen different technologies. And these technologies are fantastic things. Each one of them has a great story behind it and why it needs to be there. But sometimes what we do is we go in and we go, that looks amazing. Nice little dashboard here. I want to be using that. Do you know that's going to prove that we can do this, that, and the next thing? But what we don't do is take a step back and ask us, do you know why do we need that solution? What problem are we trying to solve? And how does that further our goals as an organization to be able to improve the service to, and the service quality to our user base as a product business or our customer base as a services business? And the reason I'm going to bring up these three key trends, and they're maybe a little bit different to the trends that you've seen with other companies, or these are trends from my experience that as I go around different places, speaking to different firms from different parts of the world, these are the three things that continually come back to us 
It's what people are looking to do within their business. First of all, customer engagement. Second of all, consolidation. And thirdly, connectivity. These are the three key themes that I'm going to talk about just for a brief moment just now. So firstly, customer engagement. What do we mean by that? What are the different things that we can do with customer engagement? Firstly, how do you use technology in your personal life? How do you use it? What kind of on-demand services do you use? So I have two kids. Okay, one of them is five and a half months. The other one is about three and a half years old, all right? They're awesome, they're great kids. However, keeping their attention on long car journeys is actually a very, very difficult thing. And over the last few years, we have seen a development in consumer technologies to give you on-demand services. I can have instant gratification of whatever I want at my fingertips. If you look at Netflix as an example, Netflix knows me too well. It absolutely does. Maybe that's because I watch too many things on Netflix, but it knows me too well. As I log into my Netflix account and peruse the grand offerings of Netflix, it directs me to exactly what I want to watch. It knows me better than most people know me. It can tell me what I like, what I dislike, what I want to watch next. And Netflix is great on long car journeys with kids because it keeps them preoccupied. I have 4G in my car. It means I can connect them to the car. They can shut up for a good two to three hours by watching something on Netflix. Now, that isn't parenting 101, and that's not why I'm here. But the way that we consume goods is coming into the business sector as well. So these on-demand services that we get are causing us to think differently about how we consume business services, not just in the consumer world, but in business to business. People are expecting those services to be delivered quickly. They're expecting them to be delivered on demand. And we're seeing a growing need in the document automation space. And when I say document automation, it's the creation of documents based on intelligence that we have in a template, the ability to be able to capture that information and generate a document. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but we see a need in the market coming more and more to be able to give people access to content, access to documents on demand, being able to create those documents instantly. The next thing we have is kind of playing on that a little bit. What about innovative, invasion, uh, innovative engagement? It's a nice little word that we can throw around there, but what does that actually mean? Well, I went over to New Zealand uh, about a year ago uh, on business, and we had a meeting there. And to get there, we had flown with Vietnam Airways from Paris over to Vietnam. We'd done something in Vietnam, and then we flew on to uh, New Zealand with Air New Zealand. Has anyone in this room flown with Air New Zealand before? No, you've all flown with Lufthansa. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is fly with Air New Zealand. Why? The experience I had with Air New Zealand from start to finish was just exceptional. Honestly, the best experience I've had with any kind of airline. From the moment you step on to get on the plane, to the moment you consume their services online, it's been absolutely fantastic experience in the service you get. One of the great things is I like not having to communicate with people, believe it or not. I like to touch things on a screen and get things delivered to me. You think of Amazon, I don't want to talk to someone in a shop. I want to put it online, they deliver it straight to my door or by drone if you live in Cambridge in the UK. So Air New Zealand on the back of their seats allows you to be able to browse their menu, select the item you want from the menu and they deliver it straight to your seat. Now this may sound like a really pithy example of innovative engagement, but it's really important. Why? Because I am standing here telling you exactly about my experience with Air New Zealand, and they're getting free publicity. Not a massive amount of publicity, but free publicity because I had a decent experience, a good experience with them. And that's so important in the services industry, the industry that when you have an experience with a vendor, experience with a service provider, that you go and talk about them afterwards. And they've got massive amount of free press from me by telling everyone to go and fly with them because it was a great experience. I'm talking about it still. And I'm going to sample Lufthansa, I flew them in and out, so I'll make a judgment on that afterwards. What about self-service? What do we mean by that? Well, self-service is the way that it all goes. You know, I, as I said before, you know, the ability to be able to log into a site, be able to take things, and then be able to then use them straight after on demand as well. Self-service. We have so many customers now that are coming to us going, do you know what, we are stuck internally with the mundane 
routine work that we continually need to do. We are producing the same document every single day in exactly the same way, and we're wasting so much time doing it that our very valuable resources are being used inappropriately. We've got very good people doing lots of document review, creating basic documents that they don't need to be done. How about we take that content and we give it to our customers instead? How about we help our customers to engage with us by giving them the ability to create their own documents? The thing you need with that is control over those documents. You need to be able to control the output that comes out. You need to be able to control what can go in and out of a document. But if you can create a suite of templates and give them to your customer, they can log into their portal. They are pre-approved from us as a firm. They can then be downloaded once they are created. Think about NDAs, things like that. They, all that grunt work can be done by someone else. It can be done by the customer. And you know what? Customers love that. They, be, they can get on-demand services and self-serve at exactly the same time. What about collaboration? Collaboration, so many intricate uh, cases that happen involve collaboration between many different firms. And one thing that is apparent when that happens is the user experience, the person, the customer who receives content, receives documents from many different firms, receive a very different experience when they do. Sometimes they're good documents, sometimes they're bad. Your documents are the face to your business at the moment. We'll talk about documents in five, 10 years time. Well, maybe over drinks later on, we'll talk about what that looks like. But at the moment, the documents you send out either by email or directly to your customers are the face of your brand. So they need to be good, they need to be quality, they need to contain all the right information in all the right places with all the right styling and formatting. And how do you do that if you're collaborating? Well, you have one template that allows you to do that in multiple different organizations. You can share that content across multiple organizations to collaborate on. You can share the data that you capture in order to build up a better picture of what the case looks like and what the deal looks like. So when we look at this, it all really adds up to customer satisfaction. And there's a whole art in working out what customer satisfaction is and what that means and how to measure that. But all these things improve customer satisfaction. They improve customer retention. People are going to come back to you for more and more services because they said, you know what, the last time I had a really good experience with that firm. I had a really good experience with that organization. Therefore, they may be slightly more expensive. They may be slightly you know, different to other organizations. But you know what? The great experience I had with them is, means I'm going to go back. I got quality service from them. So when we look at customer experience, it's all about that customer satisfaction. It's all about the client. It's all about what their needs are and how you deliver that. When you look at purchasing and implementing technologies, you need to ask, is this the right solution to fix my customer problems? And if it isn't, why am I looking at it? No. We always service everyone. You know, our customers are at the heart of what we do. Without our customers, we don't have a business. We need to be constantly evaluating who our customers are and do our services and product align to that. And that's when I bring it on to consolidation. And what do I mean by consolidation? Well, put your hand up if in your organization you use some form of Word macro to do anything. So in Microsoft Word, you use macros to do styling, to capture information. If you say no, Fantastic. You know, there are lots of legacy systems in many organizations, and this isn't just a legal thing. This is across everywhere. Every organization, banks included, insurance companies. You have legacy systems. You have systems that have been there for the last 30 years because they're there and they kind of work for that purpose that you originally bought them from, but they don't really venture outside of what they were originally designed to do. They're just there because people use them and you make do with them. We then have outdated process. Now, a little bit of uh, participation here because this is one of my favorite things to ask is, I'm gonna describe the process of creating a document in many different organizations. And I'm calling it the three steps to creating a document in an organization. First of all, step one, customer comes or client comes and says, I need you to create X document. First thing you do is you go and find a document. You go to your document management system, you go to your network share, you go to your hard disk, you look in your filing cabinet and you go, right, this deal is something about this. You know, something around about this area of law. Do you know what, I'll go and find that document. And you go and find that document and you take it out. 
And you go, right, that is close enough to the deal I'm about to work on. It's close enough, so I'll start using that. And then the second stage to this is you then modify that document. So you find a document, you then modify it. The first step to modifying a document is renaming that file from customer A to customer B, dot, doc X, right? So now what you have is a real compliance issue because you currently have a document that is named after another customer, but you currently have all the other customer's details in that document. So you found a document, you then modified it by changing the name. Then you go through the final stage of this process by manually editing that document until you get to a somewhat good point by changing the names, the dates, and all that kind of stuff, the paragraphs, what you add in, and what you take out, according to shape the deal that you've got going on at that moment. So we call that the three-stage manual process. Find, rename, and modify. There are many problems with that process. I'm not going to go through them all, but errors of omission. What have you missed that should have been in that document to start with? Errors of inclusion. What did you negotiate for that customer in the original document that shouldn't have been in for the customer that you've now put in there? What have you missed out? What have you misspelled? What have you not found that you should have found and put into that? There are many reasons why that is a bad process. And we believe at Hot Docs, we have a much better way and a much simpler way of being able to solve that problem. But that's what we find in many organizations, no matter how complex or simple their documents are. We also find that there are point solutions that you have. Five years ago, you had a problem you needed to solve quickly. You bought a solution to fix that exact problem. And we find that in HR. People buy HR systems, and all it does is produce HR documents. It's fantastic, until you come to create a share purchase agreement. And then you go, oh, mm, all right, I need to create a share purchase agreement. Yeah, that HR system only produces HR documents. Right, I'm going to buy a system that's going to be able to automate my share purchase agreements. You go and buy a share purchase agreement automation tool. Great, we can do that. Well, what about promissory notes and lending agreements that we need to do? Okay, well, I think we'll get a lending system. So let's go and buy a lending system that does that. And then over time, you build up a mass of different systems. And I say this from a point of view as I look after our IT organization uh, as part of my role. And you know what? I see that too. Over the years, we've built up lots of different systems to do point things that are really not that strategic. And this is where we see the shift moving to is that customers uh, of ours are coming to us going, look, I have all these different systems. How can I make a decision about a strategic solution that will be able to do all these documents for us? And I'll explain why this is important in a second. Because the systems have to be scalable as well. As I say, you might want to start off doing HR documents, but then you want to branch into doing SBAs, then you want to branch into lending, then you want to make sure that it's both strategic and scalable across your business to cope with the different demands that that puts on it. Then you decide that you want to go and enhance your customer experience by then saying, I'm gonna give this to our customers instead. So suddenly you've ramped up from doing one or two document templates to having 30 different templates accessed by five users, up to 20, up to 100, and then you go customer base, right? I've got about 2,000 people who then want to use this. It has to be a scalable solution, and it's got to be maintainable. Let's go back to the word macro. There was a company that we work with who built their entire business model on creating word macros, and then they found hot docs and went, what have I been doing for the last 15 years? Word macros are one of the questions we get asked most about, and the biggest problem that people come to us with are, I just can't maintain them. The person who wrote this left like three, four years ago, and I don't have any transferable skills to be able to maintain the solution that we've got. So they have to be maintainable. And they have to be maintainable by people who are not IT. Your templates must not sit within IT. IT do not how know how to create a shared purchase agreement. I hope you understand that. Many organizations have said, look, do IT need involvement with document automation? If the answer is yes, no, no, no. Please don't do that. IT should not be involved apart from standing up whatever technology needs to. The content, the templates must be owned by the business, the people who understand the documents the best. So it must be maintainable and maintainable by the people who are using it on a day-to-day -day basis. And that brings me on to my third point on connectivity. And what do I mean by connectivity? Well, the phrase that we've been banding about for a long time is APIs are king. All right? And what I mean by that, if, if you don't know what an API is, it's a programming interface that allows basically two systems to connect to each other. And the reason I say they are king is because they're the trump card when you want to do 
some integration work. They're the trump card when you have your CRM data, you have your practice management system, you have your document management system sitting in the middle. In order to be able to connect these systems, you need to be able to have APIs on them. They need to be able to be integrated with. We worked with a bank once that had uh, an old IBM mainframe system. And the only reason they could go with any document automation tool was because we could integrate with it because we had the available APIs. We have a, a business in the UK who uses document automation to create their HR contracts. They have a SAP HR system. It collects all the information from the client, uh, from the, the new employee, logging into the system, entering their details. Those details are then saved into the CRM. The CRM then contacts Hotdoc, says, can you generate me a contract here? And then we generate the contracts in about three different languages. We send it back to DocuSign, where DocuSign picks it up. The document goes out to the em new employee. And the new employee puts a signature on it. And do you want to know what the record time in doing that entire process is from SAP telling us to issue a contract to get a signature? One minute and 38 seconds. Now, we produced about five or six different documents. So that shows you how long that person really looked at their contracts for before they signed it on the dotted line. But the technology enabled a much better client engagement through the ability to be able to integrate these systems together to provide a cohesive solution. So we have disparate to connected systems. So what we're doing at Hot Dogs is we're, we're building platforms that allow Lots of different systems to be connected to generate documents, no matter what they are. You have different data and different systems, so you can push and pull them to us so we can then generate the documents from them. And then you have scalable services. As we move into the cloud, as we look at how you provide these services, you have the ability to switch on and switch off these services as well. The ability to scale them on demand, the ability to be able to make them available when you need them most, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So pulling this all together, we see customer engagement, we see consolidation of systems, and then we see connectivity. And that's what we're doing at the moment. And I bring it back to the point I was making at the start, is as you look at technology solutions, we need to look at the business problem we're trying to solve and what our customers really need. And I'll give you an example. I was at a banking event um, sorry, I was at a banking event uh, about a year ago and we were doing presentations. It was very different to this. This is a lot more relaxed. I can drink a beer up here and it's all fine. But this hall in London was about 2,500 people and it had two podiums. It had one podium on the left, had one podium on the right. And basically the event gave each person here, unlike tonight, you're very generous. You've given me 45 minutes. It's going to be tight. Um, just joking. So seven minutes to present the company's vision and what we do. And as you stand up on the stage, your seven minutes starts, the lights come on on the stage, and you look down at a massive countdown timer of seven minutes. Now, you have seven minutes to present you know, a presentation about how your technology works. And that's quite, it's quite an interesting challenge to do. But the number one thing you want to do is at these events, this was Finnovate. This is like financial technology. And there's some quite cool stuff there. I never wish ill on any other vendor or presenter. But at this, I was just like, just, just once, can I come after something that isn't that cool? Because I have to say, document automation as a technology is fantastic. It solves real world problems now. But in terms of trying to get excited about document creation, it's quite difficult. I'm trying very hard just now to make an exciting topic. But do you know what came up beforehand? Virtual reality banking. Whew. Geez, really? So this guy was up on stage, right, with a VR headset. And I'm like, oh, man, this is not going to go well for me. And he's like, he's got his headset on. And he's like looking around and he's seeing all these accounts. And I'm like, man, I don't see what, I don't want to see how little money I have in my bank accounts, especially in 3D right in front of me. You know, I'd rather, you know, keep that hidden. So he's like going around on the stage and like swiping graphs here and like doing all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, that's fantastic. I'm like, but I'm not going to use it. Gee, am I going to sit in my living room and do that? Well, do you know what? I think in maybe five, ten years' time, once you hone that, do you know what? I think there's some real implications for doing that. And I think there's some real value in that as we look further down the line. But just now, I was thinking, do you know what? How can we solve a real-world problem now? 
for you. And with, with our technology, I believe that we, we, can, we can do this. And I want to just take a step back and tell you a little bit actually about what we do. I've talked to a few of you already, so hopefully you'll, you'll understand this. And our technology allows you to take the documents you produce on a regular basis in the format that they're in, typically in Word or PDF, and allows, most importantly, non-technical business users, those who understand your documents the best, the ability to transform them into intelligent document templates by finding all the changeable bits of information, the business rules, and then inserting hot docs instructions in their place. So the next time your user goes to create a document, they don't go to Word to do that. They don't go to their filing cabinet. They don't go anywhere else, but they log into hot docs and they are presented with an interactive interview, the ability to be able to capture information as you answer questions, questions appear and disappear depending on the business rules within the document. And as you capture that information or you pull it from other systems, we then take it, we push it into our intelligent document assembly engine and out pops a document or a suite of related documents. And then all that data that you've captured can then be stored and then reused across other templates. So you have the ability to be able to create intelligent document templates for others to be able to consume and use. And then once you've created them, you can then send them off to your document management system, iManage, your workflow system for approval, whatever you'd like to do. And we're doing this with lots of different companies at the moment. These are the ones that I'm allowed to put on. This was heavily edited because I'm only allowed to put certain ones on this. But we're working with four of the five top global banks who are outside of, outside of China. We're 60% market share in Ligo. Uh, we have, uh, I think it's 50% of the top insurance company, 15 insurance companies in the world. We're working with lots of different organizations, 11,500 customers, well over a million users worldwide using our technology. And we've got well over 20 years experience in doing this. We are the pioneer and global market leader in this field. We invented the technology as a university project back in the late 80s and been developing this product ever since. We provide many different platforms, cloud, on-premise, desktop. We provide all these kind of platforms that allow you to get started from a very small scale up to some of the largest enterprises. We just signed one of our largest ever German cloud deals recently. Um, we have the ability to host cloud in Germany if that is a, a requirement for you. I know what, what the data protection requirements are just now. There's a big push at the moment with GDPR so you know where your data is and uh, at all times and you can tag it so you can be able to find it. So we're dealing with a lot of that for our customers at the moment. But, oh, I've got another 15 minutes to cover. But I'm done actually. So what we can do is we can turn it over to any questions that I might be able to answer. I honestly really do appreciate you coming at, at, at this time to come and listen to me drivel on for a little bit. But uh, any questions that you've got, happy to take them. If not, we are at stand. 27. 27 if you want to come and talk to us. Uh, thank you to my helper there. So uh, any questions just now? Or do we just want to go to the bar? No? Great. What a great finale for today. Actually, the day is not over. Um, we hope to see you all at the Kamea Suite at 8.30 for the networking dinner and party. And for those who won't come, have a good night and maybe see you tomorrow. <laughs>